Today, I am here for those of you who are fairly new to gardening and are looking for things to grow this season that are relatively easy to start from seed. And most of what I have here can be started either indoors or even direct seeded outside right into the garden. I have a few vegetables to share a little later on, but we're gonna start with some flowers. My first pick for the flowers is calendula. And this is my first pick. This one here is from Florette, which is an American-based cut flower company. Calendula is my first pick because it is very frost tolerant. I've seen it continue to flower past minus four Celsius. That is a good couple of degrees below freezing into the fall. And that means that you can plant it out well before your average last frost date or even direct seed it into the garden. I have calendula that comes up every year in the garden just from seeds dropped from the year before, which means there is no such thing as planting it too early. It's just gonna come up when it's ready. Now calendula doesn't really work that well as a cut flower because it is fairly short, it's really sticky, and it really just doesn't have a very good vase life. But I love a cheerful little bunch of calendula just brought in from your own garden to sit on the table. And it's just a really great flowering plant to have out in your ornamental beds, even if you just deadhead it when the flowers fade and leave it out there to do its own thing. It's also really easy to save the seeds at the end of the year. And the seeds are not only are they large, but they are a really unique and interesting shape, which makes them very easy to handle and easy to plant and easy to collect at the end of the season too from your own plants. And that is why it is first on the list today. Second one is sunflowers. And sunflowers are amazing because not only do you get the really tall, you know, six to 10 feet or even bigger in some cases, but you can get anything down to a really short 12 to 18 inch border variety. My favorite is called teddy bear and the heads are really fluffy, full of petals. But you also want to consider single petaled variety too because those are the ones that are going to feed your bees and your other pollinators and produce the most viable seeds either to collect for next year or to feed wildlife at the end of the season. The one I have here I just picked up at the grocery store but I loved the fluffy heads on this one. It's called Citrus. And the height on this one is says 1.8 meters. So that's somewhere in the six foot range. Sunflowers have been bred in so many colors and forms now. You can get single head, you can get branching ones, anything from dark chocolate maroon burgundy to the pro cut white light. And I do love that one for cut flowers. So I'm sure just about everyone knows what a sunflower seed looks like. They are a good size, easy to handle. And same as the calendula, they will reseed from year to year. And I've had one grow to six feet that came up in a crack in the middle of the concrete pad. So they are resilient and will grow just about anywhere that you give it the chance. So that makes sunflowers a really great choice for beginner gardeners as well. Next in my seed pack here, I have nasturtiums. This is a night and day mix from Vessies. It has a light color and a dark color as well. Primrose yellow and deep mahogany. Some people use nasturtiums as a trap crop for aphids. They work really well that way to keep the aphids away from your other maybe edible crops. But nasturtium flowers are also edible. So they make a really good garnish on salads and they're also really good at taking up space underneath taller crops such as sunflowers, for example. You can get nasturtiums that trail a few feet along the ground or even climb. And then there's some that keep a much more uh, tidy shrub-like habit. And not only do the flowers come in lots of colors, but you can get variegated foliage on it as well. There's just so many options to choose from. And really big seeds, just like the other ones we've already covered, about the size of a dried pea maybe, or even bigger. Nasturtiums are not frost tolerant though, but they will just keep on growing and blooming right up until that first frost. You can start them inside or direct sow them as well. And I don't have a seed packet here in front of me for my next pick, which is snapdragons. And the biggest difference here between snapdragons and the other three things that we've already mentioned is that snapdragon seeds are incredibly tiny. They do, however, pop up fairly easily. You can scatter them on a tray of potting soil and separate them once they all grow out, or you can plant them individually, but that usually requires the use of a toothpick dipped in water to pick up those seeds and then place them where you wanna put them. 
which is what I often do with soil blocks, but scattering them thinly across a tray also works just as well. Because the seeds are really tiny, they're harder to direct sow outside, but it is worth giving that a try. And once your snapdragons come up, they will keep on blooming well past frost and give you flowers all season long. You can get short border varieties of snapdragons right up to the really tall two to three foot cutting varieties. They come in a rainbow of colors and even different flower shapes. And if you do start them from seed, they benefit from being pinched when they are about three inches tall. If you remove the top inch or so, the top couple sets of leaves, they will produce side shoots and then you will get multiple flowers instead of just one. And the last flower on my list is zinnias. And zinnias also have a fairly good size seed so they're easy to handle. They grow very quickly, so they're easy ones to direct seed outside, but you can start them indoors as well. Just don't use too small of a cell, or better yet, start them directly in three or four inch pots, and then you can transplant them out into the ground once they develop a good root system. Zinnias come in tons of colors, right down from small border size up to really tall cutting varieties in a rainbow of colors and they are so readily available, you can just pick up a pack from any local store where you find seeds for sale in the spring, and they'll do a great job of filling up your garden spaces. They are not cold tolerant, but they will go on flowering right up until the first frost, as long as you keep them pinched or deadheaded. So those are the flowers, and I have a handful of vegetables here as well, and the first ones are, rather predictably, beans. Bush beans or even climbing beans are my first pick because the seeds are large and easy to handle. These are really easy to grow with kids. They pop up pretty fast, but wait until the soil temperature has warmed up. They are not frost tolerant, but we're not just looking for frost free nights. We are looking for the soil temperature to have warmed up a little bit. So it's best to wait until the nighttime temperatures are well above plus 10 Celsius and then they will pop up quickly and grow quickly for you. Growing beans from seed gives you the choice of lots of different varieties, either bush style or climbing style if you have a frame or fence or something to let them climb up. And other than just the yellow and green beans variety that we used to see, purple beans are really fun to grow as well, but be warned they do turn green when you cook them. So that's slightly disappointing, but still fun to grow and because they're bright purple, Amongst the green foliage, they're really easy to harvest. Next pick is tomatoes, but I'm gonna go for a really tiny variety. I've managed to find this year two dwarf tomatoes and I grabbed one of my seed packets here. This one is from West Coast Seeds. The West Coast Seeds company is from BC and this one is called Red Robin. So I bought two dwarf tomatoes from West Coast Seeds, this one and an orange one. One of them stated that it was 12 inches tall and the other one said it was 12 to 18. So this is a fantastic choice if you have a limited growing space, if you're going to be growing in containers, say on a patio or a deck, this is a great choice. So I'm really excited to try this one out this year. My third pick of veggie is also not surprising and that is summer squash or zucchini. And anyone who's grown this before knows just how prolific a zucchini plant can be, but that is a good thing. If you're new to gardening and you don't want to spend a whole bunch of money and risk not getting any reward, then zucchini is for you. But plan ahead, find some recipes so that you know how to use it. Zucchini bread is really popular. I have um, a zucchini salsa recipe that's about half and half tomatoes and zucchini. And you really forget when you're eating it that there's zucchini in there. We still have half a dozen jars in the basement. We've been eating it all winter and it is delicious. Zucchini seeds are large, similar to that as of a cucumber and a squash. It's in the same family, of course. They come up really quick. Same as the beans though, make sure your soil temperature is fairly warm. They absolutely cannot take a frost, so you, don't, so you do not want to start them early. But once they get going, they will start producing and keep producing. They need a rich soil and a good steady supply of water, but if you are on your own or in a small family, one to two plants is lots. If you're worried about losing the plant though, it is a good idea to put in a plant once every two weeks or so. That way if something happens, then you'll have more coming up behind to take its place. 
So I want to add an herb into the mix now and I'm going to pick parsley because it's probably one of the, the most well known. It's one of my favorites. I grow a ton of it. It can sometimes be a little tricky to grow from seed, but if you get fresh seed, it'll usually come up pretty quickly within a week, start it indoors. And you can also direct sow it also. The seeds are not that tiny. And once it gets going, it will keep producing all summer. It is also frost tolerant, so you can start it early or you can plant it late. It should keep going well up to six to eight weeks after your first frost, providing you don't get a heavy snow or a really hard freeze. But I've often harvested it into December, even after a freeze of minus five Celsius or so. Bunching onions are also frost tolerant. That's fairly easy to grow from seed. You can seed them every two to three weeks and then have them all summer long. So one package will really get you a lot of mileage there. And the last one is salad greens. And I like to bunch this into a category because there are so many to choose from. We always grow spinach because I find the cut and come again works really well. You can just pick a few leaves as you need it. Depending on the variety, they can go well into the season before going to seed. And it's one that is also tolerant of being planted in the shade. That is actually true of parsley and bunching onions as well. All these three things can be planted in mostly shade with only a few hours of sunlight. So that can really help you make the most of those edges of your garden where you might not know what to plant. Tomatoes, for example, on zucchini would not really thrive in those conditions but parsley and greens and your bunching onions or green onions would do really, really well. So I think that's going to cover it for today. I'll be back in the garden next time doing some work outside. Our snow is finally melted and it's just about time to get some work. So please like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff, and I'll see you out in the garden next time.